Welcome back to the Creative People Show. And with me today, I have my friend and award-winning actress, writer, producer, director, Debbie Sutcliffe. Thank you for coming, Debbie. Hey, everybody. <laughs> uh, well, we're just going to talk a little bit about your uh, the stuff you've done. Okay. Um, I know you, you've you done uh, many films, short films, uh, feature films. What was your... What was your first film that you ever got involved with? Uh, well, the first film I was ever involved with, it, what got me into films, was the film Winner's Bone. Mm -hmm. um, that was, uh, they had an open casting call that I went to, had not ever done any kind of film before. Yeah. It's just something I always wanted to do. They had an open casting call. I went to it um, and filled out all the paperwork, you know, got my picture taken and all that stuff, and then never heard from him. So, like, a month went by, and I'm like, yeah. well, okay, that was... But it was a big deal for him. I mean, it was on the radio, and yeah. it was, it was yeah. a big deal. And, like, a month later, I got a call um, for that day to go to Branson and um, do an audition to be the mother in the film. So I auditioned to be Jennifer Lawrence's mom oh, wow. in the film. But keep in mind, I had never done any f type of film. This was a cold read. I didn't. Yeah. I was like a fish out of the water. Yeah, you just started. But I did it, and I was proud of myself for doing it. Um, I did not land the role. Um, and obviously, after I read the book, I was not that character at all. Oh. And I don't even think the character in the movie really had it maybe a line or so they she didn't speak near as much as what was on these sides yeah. for me to read but i was proud of myself i did it anyways um then a few weeks later they called me and asked me if i wanted to be a part in uh as an extra that they were filming in rockaway beach missouri yeah so i'm like yeah that sounds excited to me too you yeah. know keep in mind knew knew it all of this um i went there they had this whole scene i was doing I was going to, uh, they had me standing by this pole, then I was going to walk over to sit down. And I'm, so I'm doing all this, and I'm thinking this is great. I'm really knocking this one out of the park. And then, um, of course, when I saw the film, they had so much bar smoke. It really, you know, the fog machine going, but yeah. bar, you couldn't even tell it was me. <laughs> um, so that was a disappointment. But watching all that happen yeah. is what, being Maybe. on the big uh, yeah. set like just that. just watching the cameraman the, uh, and the sound guy and the wardrobe and all this. It was just so fascinating, and that's what first got me into film. Yeah. That was uh, Jennifer Lawrence's first big yeah, role, like wasn't her, it? Yeah, that was like her... She had done some television and other things, but yeah. that was like her big breakout Breakout role. Movie. Yeah. I will say, I looked at your IMDb, and I'm impressed. I saw 42 credits on IMDb. Now, for those of you that know about IMDb, uh, Internet Movie Database... It's, uh, it's not a full listing of everything you've ever done. It's just those films that have reported and put it and published it on IMDb. So that's just a portion of the films yeah. that you've been in. <coughs> but uh, it's impressive to see that big of a number for someone. Now, what was, yeah. the, what was the year that you first started you, you, in Winter's Bone? What year was that? It was like a 2000... I think by the time they got it on there, there 2009... 2010, yeah, I'm not it. sure what year they finally yeah, put it on yeah. there. Uh, so uh, you've talked about your, your earliest uh, role in, in film. And extra work is a role. I mean, you have to... I'll start somewhere. Yeah, you've yeah. got to start somewhere. Yeah. Plus, <coughs> uh, here's something for people considering being an extra. There are things they may not tell you. You never, never, never... Look at the camera. <laughs> you never make big gestures to get yourself noticed. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't uh, look at the principles unless you're told to. Uh, it, it's just little things like that. Yeah. You gotta, yeah. you gotta know. Basically, acting like you're there, but not you're just aware of anything. Involved yeah. in whatever you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Not big, but you know whatever yeah. they tell you to do. But yeah, don't don't be <laughs> like you can. I'm over here. <laughs> yeah. Hi, mom. Yeah. No. Hold up the sign. <laughs> uh, but yeah, everybody has to start somewhere. Yeah, and that, yeah. that was my first experience. Of, and as you know, uh, that's probably in the film, maybe a two-minute scene. Yeah. 
But I was there for like five hours. I, I had an experience like so, that. So just watching all big, that. Big budget films are interesting. Uh, uh, I don't know if you saw the movie The Layover. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was a extra a traveler, a, a airport person, you know, civilian. That's what they billed me as. I don't yeah. know why they called me civilian. But anyway, Somebody just someone traveling travel. with, yeah. with a bag behind the girls as they come up to the, the ticket counter. You can see me in a scene just for a few seconds. But the experience of being on a big set like that, William H. Macy was the director. Mm -hmm. So uh, watching that, watching him, watching the, the big names do their scenes and stuff, uh, and the, the big dollies, they're sitting on a, yeah. on a seat with the, with the big mm -hmm. cameras, you know. It's, it's amazing. It's a quite a different than the, the little yeah. no-budget indie films yeah. that, that Which we've, we've all, all been. Which we've both yes. done a lot of. Yeah. Uh, so how many hours were you on that set for that oh, extra role? Oh, about eight hours. Yeah. 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 And uh, so you own a production company called SS Films, mm -hmm. and you've written, produced, and directed, and starred in most of those. Yeah. Uh, but that's one thing that, that some people don't think of, uh, not waiting for your big big break just mm -hmm. go ahead and make your big break make, make your content make it yourself if yeah. you have a role uh, like i'm a older female in the you know hollywood version of you know they like them young uh, and um so if you want to have a role that's not the mom the grandma the something like that make your own content a lot of that's how a lot of people yeah do it if, if yeah, you've always wanted to be a certain character if you always wanted to be a cop or whatever yeah. make make that do it yeah don't sit around and wait for somebody else to do it Just right right you gotta actively pursue it yeah and, and I, I suggest you a lot of pre-production and um, uh, get you a good team if I I hire my my crew because I know enough about a camera to film myself doing a video audition, mm -hmm. but I don't know enough about one to make a film. Yeah. I hire my own editor. I hire all those people. I, yeah. I can play, you know, I can pretend like I know what I'm doing enough to put a reel together or something. Yeah. But to put a film together, if you're gonna bother to do this and have people and you want it to turn out good, hire the people that know what they're doing. Yeah, cinematography, the angles, the, uh, the editing and the sound can mm -hmm. make or break a film too. Yep. Yep, you get that. Get if you don't. Well, you've all. You know, you you wait two years for a little piece of a thing you're going to put on your reel, and if it doesn't sound good, you can't use it. Yeah, if it doesn't yeah. look good, you can't use it. So, yeah. spend the money, or at least get with a good group that that want to do it, that know what they're doing. Yeah. yeah. And and work on your pre-production, production, and post-production. Have have that all. Because if you, as you and I both know, a lot of things they things look good at the start. They 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 want to have this casting call. They get all these actors jumping through all these hoops and all this. And and midway through filming, you can see things are starting to. And then toward the end, it just gets on a shelf and never gets done. Mm -hmm. So yeah. plan, 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 and have a good team. Yeah, we've both been on several of those. Yeah. Uh, what's your most recent? project that you've been doing that you've done um i just finished a film called in the water which i have uh, signed nda so i can't say much okay. about it but um i locally hear um a film called vincent's vow and it was shot um it just won it won best picture at the international christian film festival in orlando yeah ducon williams was yes ducon williams um he he was his goal was to not only did he write a good film he had a good crew mm -hmm. again he had the sound he had the can he had the crew that knew what they were doing he had professional lighting you know all yeah. all of that and he um he ran it like a a big sag film mm -hmm. and he took care of his people he had all of his you know every film's going to have some things you have to improvise you know everything has a stumble along yeah. the way oh, it's yeah. just not going to run smoothly but he had the team there. He had the solid script. He he ran a professional set. Mm -hmm. He wanted to make sure his people were taken care of. He had the craft services come in and feed us. He had the crafty table full of snacks so your blood sugar didn't crash. Yeah. You know, he just 
he just ran for a, around here, um, not, I mean, it compared with the psych films I've been in. Yeah. So I was proud of him for that, um, for a, a film around here to go to the biggest. And again, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, that's okay. A film for around here to go to the biggest film festival, Christian film festival, that competes with all the Christian film festival and big studios and everything to walk away with best picture. Mm -hmm. It says That's a in lot. Orlando. Yes. Uh, the International Christian Film and, and Music, Music Festival, festival now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But the, yeah. 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 And it's a it's a really good festival. It's a big, it's a big festival. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, a lot of our mutual friends have been down there yeah. several years. And yeah. Uh, you you said you weren't able to go this year because you were shooting something. Yeah. I wasn't able to go this year. Last year, 2020. We all love 2020. Um, my film Pushing Envelopes made it to that festival and was up for three awards and I yes. actually walked away with Best Actress in a Short Film. Yes, yes. So there I sat at my kitchen table in my pajamas, <laughs> <laughs> 2020, and it was still it was very special to me. Special. Yeah. But you know, there at that festival is the big red carpet, you get to wear yeah. your gown, you get to go, you know, um, and you know, just mingle with all fellow filmmakers uh -huh. and so I didn't 2020 COVID didn't get any of that um but it was still a a night I'll remember sitting yeah. there at my kitchen table and I had won that award and then I went to bed but you know it was <laughs> it was it was and a it moment. Was best actress for that film for uh, uh, one of my films pushing yes. envelopes yes. Yes. yes yes and it wasn't just me it's it takes a team to win an award and that was one of those that I I hired the camera person, I hired the editor, I hired the sound person, uh, actors that um, I had worked before or either just wanted to work with in case this was my last film. I wanted to get, you know, those promises in there and just that experience of working with those people one more time. Um, and they're just a good team. And it, yeah. again, that's the whole pre-production and just find you a team of talented people. If mm -hmm. I had tried to film that and do my own sound or just my buddy from work or something do it, we wouldn't have won. Yeah. Pushing him won they, that film won awards in almost every festival. It was, I think we didn't win in two when one of them was Sundance. So I don't want to, you know, and then another, so we, out of all of the festivals we entered, there was only two we didn't walk away with the award. So, mm. and that's all because of a good crew yeah. and a good cast. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, could be the same good acting, mm -hmm. but the distraction of the lighting or the sound or something mm -hmm. that distracts you from that acting, that yeah. can be the key to mm -hmm. making a breaker in films. Yes. Especially, I've watched, I've been involved in films where you don't have a good camera person and that camera's moving mm -hmm. to, you know, they just don't, you know, there's a time if you got a steady cam, if you got the equipment, yeah. you can do that. But if you're just trying to free hold a camera and say, you know, it's just not, it's not going to be, it's going to be a good film you can be proud of, but it's not going to be a good film that's going to be able to compete with the big boys. Yeah. We've, uh, just want to mention this, uh, Debbie and I have both been in the same films, like in, in, in films together like five times, mm -hmm. but only one film we've actually had a scene together, yep. and that's Taney Como, mm -hmm. uh, where I played a, a homeless veteran with PTSD raising a teenage son, and uh, she was the attorney mm -hmm. who's grilling me as I, after I got uh, arrested uh, or if my character gets arrested. And that was with Deborah Watson. And yes. I love working with Deborah Watson. Um, that was that was a good mm -hmm. film and a good scene. I used that scene between you and me in my reel several times just because <laughs> I, I like the back and forth with it. Yeah. So I was glad to have that opportunity. Hope to work with her again someday. But I noticed your website is not DebbieSutcliffe.com. It's SutcliffeDebbie.com. What was the... Reasoning for someone else already had the someone other? else has it there. Uh, I think she's like a painter, oh, like okay. artist painter or something like that. So I just flipped it around. I didn't even think about yeah. that. Someone else has stephenbrown.com, so yeah. I went with stephenbrown.org. Yeah. 
and and I and could have done something like Debbie Sutcliffe dot one or something like yeah. that. Like even on Instagram, I Instagram I had to go actress Debbie Sutcliffe because yeah. there you would you wouldn't think with that name there would be so many. But spelled that same way, yeah. yeah. So my the SS film yeah. people have wondered what that is. Yeah. So the a lot of people guess. Uh, my husband has a Chevelle, so he's into muscle cars. Oh, so they okay. think it's super sport. They, the SS on his Chevelle. I thought it was Sutcliffe and Sutcliffe. Nope, it's no. my maiden. You're close. My oh. my maiden name is Swindell. <laughs> okay. And my married name is Sutcliffe. I guess. So you. we went with SS because ah. my husband's car is an SS uh -huh. Chevelle, <laughs> but really the meaning is for uh, my maiden name and my married name. Oh, okay. So. Oh, I never even. Yeah. Thought of that. Yeah. And, and my husband, he's not in the film business, but yeah. he, if I need a reader for an audition, yeah. or he has helped South of Swan Creek, which yeah. you um, donated one of your songs for yeah. our, our, the ending scene of that film. So thank you very much. Yes. Um, my husband filmed a little bit of that out at our farm. Uh huh. But he's really not into the film thing, but he <laughs> gets a producer. He gets some kind of credit every once in a while yeah. just for helping out. Yeah. So. And speaking of your farm, uh, you have horses. How mm -hmm. many? You're really into horses, and you want. Uh, and I've noticed a couple of times recently you've played a, a, a cowgirl type, mm -hmm. you know, horse horse lady in yeah. uh, in films. Yeah. Uh, we started out when we first moved out there. We lived we lived in Ozark, Missouri. Then we moved out farther out in the country, and I live right next to Mark Twain National Forest. Mm -hmm. So we started out when we moved out there with five horses and two little miniature horses. Oh, yeah? When a horse gets to our place, it's their forever home, uh -huh. and they have all died of old age. Yeah. But, uh, well, one had hurt his leg and had to be, thankfully, God took care of it because I wouldn't have the heart to put the horse down. But we are down to one horse and one donkey now. Oh, no. They've all wow. just been there in their forever home, wow. just eating away and being happy in their pasture. So. Yeah, so you're not planning on getting any more? Um, not at the moment, just because we don't have the time to really... Yeah. They deserve a lot more time and attention than than we can give what's, them. What's the one you have now, the, the horse? Um, the horse that we have now is Amber. She is uh, my husband's horse. Her... She is a thoroughbred, and oh. her papers, she has papers, and not that our horses have to be fancy. We, you know, that one just came with them, but she, her, her legal name on her papers is Amber's Attitude, okay. and sometimes she has an attitude. <laughs> and then we have a donkey named Jerry, and he's uh, just the mellowest thing ever. Really? So, yeah. So that's, yeah, life on the farm. It's kind of laid back. <laughs> dun, dun. I had love John started. Denver. <laughs> yeah, me too. And you were, uh, speaking of John Denver, uh, were you born in Colorado? I was. I was yeah. born in Colorado, um, northeast Colorado. Yeah. Um, kind of out there between Sterling and Marino for those Colorado people out there. And then we moved to El Cajon, California, and then um, back to Colorado. And then my how I ended up in Missouri is my Aunt Mary used to work at a doctor's office here. She yeah. lived in Miller, Missouri, and she got me my first job. So. Oh, okay. So in Colorado, is that where your love for horses and yeah, the when we were when we were little, we had the, the pony and the and a Shetland pony yeah. and and some cows. And we talked about your first project, your your most recent one. You got anything coming up, upcoming uh, that you're going to be shooting soon that, that you can talk um, about? At least. There, there was a. It, it's weird. You always have to think of what did I sign and what can yeah. I talk about. Yeah. Um, and this one's on IMDb, so it's okay to sort of talk about oh, okay. um, yeah. it. It was a 2020, it's going to say it's my first bigger role mm -hmm. because, um, like, they send a, the big contract, yeah. flying you out, pick you up. Nice. Uh, you know, it, it, so it was an exciting thing. And then uh, it's scheduled for 2020, COVID hit. And there's some travel involved, and there's some international, like, they filmed part of it in Ireland. Yeah. So there's some people flying internationally. So with COVID, that's that wasn't happening. So there is um, Sorry. there is some talk of uh, the producers kind of put some things out there. They've added me to some pages. So, so are you going to Ireland? I think well, that's an iffy thing uh -huh. um, because my scenes involve some things that they might not be able to do over where they were doing okay. as far as effects 
like fire or stuff like that. Yeah. So they also have a studio in Florida. So, mm. so it just depends on what they can do where. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, but either way, it'll be great yeah. for me just because yeah. I get to travel. But um, there's some other casts that are not in the United States. So it all, mm -hmm. that's what, even though we're kind of lifted on the whole COVID thing, yeah. we've got to wait for some other places. Right. To, yeah. So it could be, could be Ireland. Uh -huh. And they're just, they've got to look through a few details on what they're allowed to do where. Right. Because some right. of the things they filmed S are. Slowly opening back yeah, up. Yeah. Some of the things they filmed are at a important historical places and there's things you just can't do in those places yeah yeah there's talk of a western which i love western yes. so there's talk of one of those so right now it's in the pre-production so let's hope is it locally or is that um it's not local okay um but it's in the very much pre-production stage so as you and i have learned don't get your hopes up until yeah. Yeah. it happens but I love Westerns, and this always surprises people, but I'm kind of a geek, too. Uh -huh. I love um, Marvel Avengery type films, oh, yeah. too. So, so someday I hope to be, I don't know, something in the cool, something like that, too. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What would be your ideal role? I know this is kind of hard to, to choose, but what? Yeah. Um, in, in any in, kind of? Yeah. Um, well, gee, if, if your audience ha knows somebody at Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know I'm too old to be a superhero of, of some sort, but I could be the scientist or something, yeah. you know, yeah. something in that. Um, I, I just, that. I know a lot of people are, that shocks a lot of people, I guess. They are, they're not shocked by the Western as much because they know they have know. horses and stuff. But when I talk about geeky stuff like that, they're a little shocked, but. Um, I'd like to check off all the boxes, so I'd like to do something like that. I'm not so much, uh, a f I mean, I, I am a, a sort of a fan of the superhero stuff, uh, but I'm more of a sci-fi guy, yeah. you know, yeah, Star the, Wars, the Star, Star Trek, yeah, I love those too. Stargate, yeah. Yeah, something like anything that, with yeah. the word star in it, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, if any <laughs> of that would be good. Somebody that's good at those, you know, virtual yeah. special effects-y type things. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you can do so much now with green screens mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, yeah, graphic you know, yeah. CGI, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, that's what I, that's the, something I want to do. Um, like I said, I want to check all the boxes off. I, yeah. And uh, I've done the, the mom, the Western, you know, I'd like to do something like that. Yeah, yeah. Now, I always have my guests tie this into the, the theme of the show, creativity, but also advice for up and coming writers, producers, directors, actors, anyone wanting to get into entertainment or the film industry, what would you say to them? I would say start where you're comfortable. Don't think you're going to go out there and just knock out a great feature film. <laughs> start, start where you're at. Mm -hmm. And and only get better. Don't don't keep making the same. You're gonna you're gonna have things you wish you would have approved. You're gonna watch and go, yeah, gosh, I wish I would have done that. Yeah. That's natural. Yeah. And just keep. If every one of your things you started here, if everyone gets a little better as you go, you're doing it right. Mm -hmm. Don't start. Don't stress yourself out with starting out. I've never made a film. I've never done any of that. And I'm gonna make a feature film. You might be great and be able to do that. You could do that if you have a lot of money and hire great people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but start where start start where you're at and go from there. And exactly. if you want to be an actor, actress, don't start. I know people that have never acted before, but they're like, "Oh, I'm too good to go do a student film." <laughs> do the student film yeah. because number one, it's going to get done, which yeah, which is a great thing about a student film. They have to get done yeah. to get their grade. Yeah. I've been so, in a few of those. Do the student film because you're going to at least get something for your reel. Yeah. And they, like I said, it's going to get done. We're a lot of, as we've, you know, a lot of films, especially mm -hmm. local indie, no budget things. If they, if they get done and they're great, it's a, it's an, a major accomplishment. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of them just die on the editor's shelf or whatever. Yeah. They just don't make it. So they give up on them. So, um, if you're a born talent, like I know some great actors that never had to go to any acting 
They don't have to study the craft. They didn't go to any type of acting workshops mm, or really? there. But that's, if you've never unusual. acted, I, I say go to go to a acting workshop. I went to a creative class, actors work, class yeah. here in Springfield. They're not here now, but when I first started out, I went there for like three years. Mm -hmm. And I still, if I'm not on set, I'm still um, watching a video, reading a book. Mm -hmm. um, there's great master classes online. Yes. Uh, do something like that if yeah. you want to be a yeah. if you want to be an actor, study your craft. So yes. Watch, watch, watch how other people do it. Even even when you're watching a movie. It, it, in on TV or you know, thankfully at the theater maybe again, uh, just watch them and and that in a way you're you're studying your craft. Mm -hmm. I've said this uh, for a long time. As a little kid, I would I've been informally studying acting since I was a little kid mm -hmm. because I would watch uh, the characters on the cartoons or the mm -hmm. or the films, uh, the TV shows that I would watch. And try to mimic them. Yeah. You know, I would yeah. make the voices and the sounds and stuff when I was a little kid. You know, so that's yeah. where that comes from. But uh, yeah, but then I did actually get involved with a, a training program uh, back in 2013. I graduated in 2014, and I learned a whole lot mm -hmm. that I did not know uh, about the business side and the acting side you know it's, it's entertainment business or show mm -hmm. business mm -hmm. there's show part and there's business part yep. uh, can you talk about that a little bit i have an agent mm -hmm. but even though i can say i have an agent from la i still am my own agent mm -hmm. i still 99 percent of what i book i've booked myself yes if you're just going to say i have an agent and not not keep up your your side of the business. The business is your headshots, your reel, your unfortunately Isn't now it? social media. Your which I'm not a like I dread. Oh God, I got to get on Instagram. <laughs> but it's all part of the I'm, business I'm now. A, I'm an IT guy, so I'm on the computer yeah, a lot. Yeah, it's it's all part of the business now. So that stuff you have to do the business side yourself is even though you. You can't just sit on the couch and say, well, I have an agent. You, I guess you can if you're maybe Brad Pitt or something. But yeah. if Once you're, you make if you're 99 percent of just the regular working actor, you're you're and, you know, you have to be the one. Like like I said, I, I've booked most of the roles myself. Yes. I've I have to keep up with the keeping up with the as you know, keeping up with the web page and everything. Mm -hmm. that, that's almost a second job in itself doing all yeah. that stuff. But yeah. unfortunately it's stuff you have to do. You have to promote yourself. Right. You have to vent the people that say that they've you know, because there's gonna be somebody that's gonna contact you and say, I have I'm the biggest director ever and I have this great film and you're going to I've worked with Sony, whatever and if you don't vent these people out, uh you know, sometimes they're just not who they yeah, say. So exactly. that's part of it too, is venting out and seeing it, looking at their stuff. Did they ever finish anything? Yes, like that. creativity. Uh, how does create, uh, it may be obvious to some people, but how does creativity come into play as an actor? Because you're just reciting lines that someone else wrote, or in yeah. the, your case, most of the cases. Wrote, yeah. You, you wrote, so yeah. you understand the, in, the uh, implications and in, in what uh, you wanted to convey mm -hmm. uh, but if someone else wrote it uh, if you're just reciting the lines are you acting I do a not an extensive backstory like from the day I, the, the <laughs> thing was born like I've heard some but I, I'm like okay who is this person why are they doing this what are they benefiting from it what are they feeling at the moment I just kind of break it down like that, and yep. then I then it's it's just like you. It's Stephen Brown. He was cast in a role as the police officer mm -hmm. John Doe, but he's no longer Stephen Brown. He's police officer John Doe. Yeah. You know, yeah. so that's how you become that person. Yeah. You're no longer Stephen Brown, and so I've done a. I don't know. I've died in movies like three times. Yeah, me too. So and yeah. my mom, the film Pushing Envelopes, which I was all, you know, it's just, oh, that's the best. You know, I was just so proud of that film and my team. Yeah, you should be. Um, and 
at the end of it, and I sent a copy to my mom and brother, and I'm ex <laughs> so excited to hear what they have to say, yeah. and they didn't like it. Oh. They they didn't like it because it was they said it was just hit home too good. And oh, I'm like, well, that means I did a great job. Exactly. Um, but yeah, they did. They it hit too close to reality, which is what we want exactly. when we're we're doing something. I'm like, no. Debbie Sutcliffe didn't die in this film. Right. The, you know, the character died in this film. So yeah. she's not a big fan of me dying in films. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I uh, thank you for coming in. Yeah. Uh, just remember her website is SutcliffeDebbie.com. Thanks, Debbie, for thanks. coming in. All right. Thanks for having me. All thank right. you, everybody.